Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to come back to Mars and talk about some of the mission updates from the Perseverance and Ingenuity probes and specifically discuss some of the most recent achievements and accomplishments from the mission itself along with the future plans. But to be honest, I really wanted to start with something I did not get to discuss in some of the previous videos. Something that happened during the fourth flight of the Ingenuity helicopter and something that's extremely important for our understanding of the Martian atmosphere. And that something is the video you see right here that was posted by NASA a few months ago. The Sounds of Martian Atmosphere. Now let me play this first so you can actually hear this for yourself and at the same time I'll explain to you what you're actually hearing. So there are a lot of different sounds going on here, but the most important part is the detection of the sound of the blaze as the helicopter travels across the atmosphere. And what might not be obvious right away, but what actually becomes obvious once you analyze this, is that first of all, obviously the sounds here are much lower in volume. In other words, if you were to try to scream on Mars, your voice would not carry very well. I did discuss all of this in one of the previous videos that's somewhere right here, but in a nutshell, you would have to scream extremely loud for someone next to you to actually be able to hear you. And this is obviously due to the much thinner atmosphere here. Also because the atmosphere is predominantly CO2, the speed of sound here is approximately 30% lower than the speed of sound on planet Earth. At the same time, because the atmosphere is CO2, it tends to absorb a lot of the higher pitch sounds. And so mostly lower pitch sounds travel long distances here, which is why you get to hear the blades of the helicopter in much lower frequencies. And so even your voice here would actually sound much lower. Assuming of course you can produce enough sound. And so back when NASA released this um, a few months ago, I was actually mind blown by this, but did not get to talk about this in one of the videos, simply because there were just so many other things to cover. But anyway, so what else has been happening with the mission? Well, as you might have already heard probably, the Ingenuity mission has been officially extended indefinitely. For as long as the helicopter can fly, it's going to be flying around, taking incredible photos, and providing a lot of guidance for the Perseverance rover as well. And as of making of this video, it's recently completed its 13th flight, which means that it officially traveled close to about 3 kilometers on Mars and has spent approximately 24 minutes in the air, which is actually really, really impressive. One of NASA's maps even provides you the exact detail of where both the helicopter and Perseverance probes are, and you can sort of see how the main mission right now is to sort of fly ahead of the rover and explore the areas that would be otherwise invisible to the rover itself. And specifically in the last few flights, the helicopter was focusing on a very specific area visible right here that the scientists refer to as the South Seta. With the Seta being these unusual formations you see that are formed from the Martian sand. Now this is something Perseverance rover will probably never be able to go through or to even reach. And so in this case, the Ingenuity helicopter is a perfect observation platform that's able to take a lot of high quality pictures. With every flight so far being focused on taking pairs of pictures in order to create these pseudo three dimensional pictures known as anaglyphs, which can then be combined and used for a lot of various studies and a lot of various analysis, especially when it comes to studying various structures on the surface of Mars. But unlike the rover, the helicopter in this case does not actually have a special stereo camera for taking these three dimensional pictures. And so to try to solve this, the scientists running the helicopter program found a little trick. The helicopter takes duplicate photos of pretty much the same terrain while hovering in a slightly offset position. And so it's been taking five photos for every location and then moving to a new direction. And in this case, it's just meant to create these beautiful three-dimensional pictures of certain areas we've never seen before. And right now they're working on two areas specifically, this one right here, the area they refer to as raised ridges and the more mysterious sandy area known as South Seta. But even though they're mostly focusing on one area at a time, in the last six months, and yeah, it's been six months already, the helicopter took approximately 1400 black and white pictures and 72 color pictures, allowing us to visualize a lot of the Martian terrain in the way we've never been able to see before. And all of these pictures are publicly available on the site for the mission itself. But what about the Perseverance rover? 
Well, you might have heard that it initially had a slight problem collecting rocks. One of the samples that was initially collected turned out to be completely empty, there was nothing inside the tube. But it looks like the second attempt was successful. The NASA has finally collected the first sample from Mars that's going to be returned back to the planet in the next few years. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a few minutes, but essentially this is kind of what it looks like. But if you were to sort of zoom out of this picture and to try to imagine how all of this works, you would sort of see something like this. The part we're looking at is this right here. This has the coring drill, whose main purpose is to drill into the rock and to then try to collect a pencil-sized piece of rock that's then going to be moved into the main body of the rover that contains these tubes you see right here, 43 of them to be exact, with one unfortunately empty, one containing the gas sample from the atmosphere of Mars, and one now containing the piece of rock. Okay, no wait. Quick correction. As I was making this video, another sample was recently collected from exactly the same rock, with the first core sample already briefly analyzed, using some of the onboard machinery. And the preliminary discovery is that this is a basaltic or a volcanic rock and seems to contain quite a lot of crystalline minerals that are usually helpful in different types of radiometric dating. But more importantly, it seems to also contain salts. And these salts probably came from groundwater that used to run through this particular area. And if this area was covered in water, some of these salt minerals might also have trapped tiny bubbles of ancient Martian water. And so at the moment this definitely looks like a very exciting discovery and an extremely important sample to be recovered later. And in the next few years, as Perseverance goes around the planet, it's going to collect approximately one kilogram, or about two and a half pounds, of various types of samples from various locations on Mars. And since there are 43 different samples to be collected, this will most likely take quite a while. But these samples are meant to be returned, because this is actually a two-part mission, and all of these titanium tubes are meant to be retrieved and returned back to the planet. Here's, by the way, what the rocks actually look like after the samples are taken from them. This does look kind of eerie, to be honest. But that second part of the mission that's going to be returning the samples is still in planning. At the moment, NASA is not entirely certain how all of this will go just yet. But at the moment, it's believed that the so-called Fetch rover is going to be launched sometimes in 2026. Here's the current version of the probe and what it might resemble. And so inside the lander, we're going to have this tiny rover whose main mission is going to be collecting the samples that are going to be eventually released by the Perseverance rover. Although it's still not entirely clear how they're going to be released, because currently they're meant to be stored inside the body right here. Following this, it's going to return back to the original lander and store all 43 samples inside a tiny compartment here, which contains a small rocket that's going to be launched and put into Martian orbit. And the rocket in this case is just going to stay in orbit of Mars until the joint NASA's ESA's mission, known as the Return Orbiter, picks it up and then returns it back to planet Earth. So this is a multi-step mission, a really complex mission, but also a very intriguing mission. And if all of these steps work, it's actually going to be one of the most impressive missions ever accomplished. But at the moment, all of this is still very preliminary, because NASA is already working on the next version of a helicopter, and there is a slight chance that all of this could be done by a helicopter, not so much an actual rover. And we'll be talking more about this mission in one of the future videos. But in this case, NASA is already developing a new helicopter able to potentially lift several kilograms of different payloads, with a total weight of about 30 kilograms, and also able to travel up to about 625 meters in distance a brilliant helicopter that might actually make Martian missions a lot easier. With a lot of the lessons learned from the Ingenuity right here, even though initially scientists were planning to launch some sort of a retrieval rover, they're now thinking that it might be easier with a helicopter. And so that future mission of launching in 2026 is definitely going to be very exciting. And so that's what's happening with the Perseverance and Ingenuity right now. But there's one more thing I wanted to mention. China. China, looking at the successes from NASA, also realized that they should be launching a helicopter as well. With the article right here written in Chinese, where you can just use Google Translate to translate everything, telling us a little bit more about what they're actually planning. Now this is just a mock-up for now, but their mission is not just a direct copy of what NASA is doing. As a matter of fact, this was originally planned for the Tianwen-1 mission, and this was even before NASA officially made all of this public. And so it's not necessarily a copycat, it's more of a mission that they realized should definitely be possible after NASA's success. At the moment, they're not even entirely sure if this is going to be a helicopter or some sort of a surface drone, 
with actual wings and actual rotor used for generating lift. But either way, these missions do sound really exciting. And so in about a year and a half from now, we might hear more about what both NASA and China are going to be launching. Mostly because the new window for the Martian launches is going to become available once again. And for all we know, China might become the first nation to potentially launch some sort of fixed wing aircraft that's able to travel tens of kilometers in a single flight. It means that we're entering a completely new era of planetary exploration. Rovers are the old generation. Everything that's new generation is going to be flying. Either helicopters or potentially fixed-wing aircraft. With of course the most exciting of them all being the Dragonfly mission that's going to be launching to Saturn's moon Titan in a few years from now. But anyway, we'll talk more about all of this in some of the future videos. For now, that's I guess all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, check out all of the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.